because people are trying to live on Instagram and live in social media the way they want people to see them living and not really what they really live like. Hey family, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. I'm your host, That Ball Brother. If you're new here, thanks for checking us out. Hope you stick around to the end of the video because it's my mission to earn your subscription. Today, we're going to slide over the We Need to Talk and discuss black women's thoughts on submission. Let's get into it. Why does the word submission trigger y'all? Mm. I feel like these questions aren't that difficult. They're not. Mm -mm. It's difficult from a woman's perspective because women don't want to wrap their minds around it. And I think that's why women are not okay with that word because they don't want to inherently accept well, how do we how do we get there how do we get to this point we if we're not even willing to accept the word we're definitely not going to be willing to accept what got us to being icky about that word mm. we are the most helpful and kind unhelpful motherfuckers on this planet <laughs> A woman will go to the death for her friend and they will create the most cozy space for their family, the most endearing space for their best friend. But for some reason, when it comes to a man, it's a pit that you get in your stomach like, oh, hell no. Nah. Hmm. And I think it's also like, what are my, like, what are my friends going to think if I talk about catering to my man? I can cater to my friends all day. Me, for example, I love having my friends around me, like as far as holidays and dinners and like things that make my friends feel good. I love having us all together. We're all like that. All of my friends, we have, I have a tight friend group. We're all like that. We just like having each other together. And we're not, thankfully, I don't have friends that if I were to do that same thing for a man, that they would look at me different. But I could see like a, a feminist <laughs> or a woman that um, doesn't think that men are, in, or they inherently don't think that men are deserving of that feminine submissive energy. I can see them doing those things in that same setting, setting for their friend or for a family member at Thanksgiving, making it warm, lighting candles, this and that. And then maybe going home to their man and being like, oh, don't talk to me like that. You're you're talking, you don't even make your plate? Fuck no. So it sounds like she's saying that there's a bit of peer pressure involved from females in their group when it comes to catering to their man or being submissive in this particular case. And which is interesting as to why you would want to not have that in both your worlds, like just in your friend's world, as well as your, as well as your home life with your man, I would think you want to have that going both ways, but it seems like there's that submission word, as she mentioned earlier, is just, it just the, the definition of it, the way it sounds really doesn't resonate with women very well, which causes them to be apprehensive when it comes to doing that or being that way with their man. So those like small little things, like we, I think as a society have a way of blowing things up bigger than what they really are. Like submission doesn't have to mean I'm getting on my knees for you. Exactly. Like that's not what it has to mean. Like it doesn't have to mean like, like you see in movies, like slaves, being like, yes, okay, you know, it doesn't have to be like that. Like, why is it that submission can't be the little subtle things? Like, simply, mm, can you hand me that, babe? Or come help me with something, and you listening to the directions of what they're saying. I agree 100%. I mean, I think it's also that it's, it's left to the interpretation of the persons involved. I think that I agree with what you're saying that, you know, to me, submission is nothing to do with you being in, in, in an indentured servant. It's more about, you know, helping each other out the way you describe, you know, hey, can you help me out with this? Can you hand me that? Can you do this for me? Can I can I do that for you? That kind of thing. Subtlety is is where I think that that's that that's lost. That point is lost 
because people just take the definition of the word for what it what it truly is and think that you mean the core of it no submission comes in many is a spectrum as far as i'm concerned and it comes in many different flavors it just depends on who you're dealing with and what they're willing to do or how they're willing to interpret that word or can you go and get me whatever because i'm doing this and not even an explanation they don't have to give you an explanation but just like just like little things i think that um with the advent of feminism like we are so transfixed in our own autonomy that we've forgotten completely about our natural ability to want to take care and cater to other people. It doesn't necessarily have to be a mate or a partner, mm. but we have a natural ability as women to want to take care of other people. Feminism has like inserted this level of selfishness inside of us where my autonomy and my ability to be independent is king. Wow. That's what it is. And whenever I prove in a social setting, because usually it's a social setting, right? With these, you don't do this like stuff and by yourself or whatever. But in a social setting, if I can prove that I'm the smartest or I can prove that I did this thing on my own, it's like an accolade or it's praised. So feminism in so feminism has created a, a a belief system where you don't have to cater to anybody and just focus on yourself. Let me know in the comments if you think that's that's the accurate portrayal of what fem feminism has done to mod to the modern woman. Has it created a situation where your independence and autonomy overshadow your natural innate nurturing and catering behaviors or instincts? I think that we have abandon our sense of community outside of what makes us comfortable like mm. as, also. as long as we have friends to go out with i don't care about loyalty so much like i don't care about sacrifice as long as like my lifestyle is comfortable i don't care about sacrificing anything from my like the community mm. i think that a lot of us i i have a goddaughter and we do the best that we can to provide a you know a pretty pretty solid community for her but i still know i still see like sometimes my selfish ways especially when i was younger because she was born i think maybe i was like 2021 20, when i was younger i was like no i want to go out yeah, i think we all have that you know no one wants to have their square upset Everybody lives in their own little world and has their lifestyle and doesn't want that disrupted or interrupted. Any any threats to that uh, become an existential event for some people. Well, most people, I would say. Uh, I think that we all suffer, men and women alike. Like, I want to party. I have zero regard for the, even though she was young, thankfully I grew out of this because she's six now. But I have zero regard for this child and her well-being. I just want to go out and do whatever I want to do. We've, excuse me, we've lost like our sense of like loyalty to our communities and to ourselves. And we are so fucking brainwashed as a black community of women. We're brainwashed, Ellen. Like, it's really, really heartbreaking the influence that social media and these celebrities really have on us. And the. That's not new. And it's also heartbreaking how much our mothers and our fathers have just haven't given us the tools because they don't know anything more. So it's like the heartbreak is perpetual. Yeah, I mean, parents are going to do the best they can. And, you know, we parents of this generation or recent generations have grown up in the technology, technological phase where everything's at your fingertips. So even parenting tools are at your fingertips. The TV, the cell phone, the tablet, those are the new babysitters and have been for quite some time. I always get tickled when I when I look when I'm sitting on a train riding into work and I see a little child with a cell phone who can't be more than three or four years old. Yet they own that cell phone, moving their fingers around, doing things 
with that cell phone as if they've been working with it forever. Probably a lot of kids know a lot more about technology than their own parents do these days. So yeah, social media is a is 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 life imitating is art imitating life, I guess, or fake life because people are trying to live on Instagram and live in social media the way they want people to see them living and not really what they really live like. It's all about putting up an image and keeping it and trying to maintain some facade so that we feel good about ourselves when we know that our lives are shitty and we're fucked up people. So um, it's sad, but like I said, my parents coming up in my generation and my parents didn't have the, 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 the ease of technology like we do now, but I know they did the best they could do with what they knew. They weren't perfect, but they did, they did a damn good job with, with, with what they did know. And I would have, I would have turned out a lot worse had they not even tried. So I'm grateful for that. You can't blame it on a on mother, grandmother. Great. You can't blame it on anyone. It's a perpetual thing. And we do the best that we can. Yep. And our parents did the best that they could. But none of that matters because none of it is enough for these babies, like these kids out here. Yep. Like at all. Yeah, the kids today have it really rough. On top of the whole pandemic thing going on, the kids in this generation are going to grow up knowing a lot of folks wore masks for a good portion of their young lives. And they're not going to they're not going to be able to appreciate what it was like when before people were wearing masks constantly and seeing someone's face. But our, our work as adults and parents right now is cut out for us and trying to get these kids uh, well rounded and groomed for the world of tomorrow when we are ourselves still trying to catch up technologically. Hey, shout out to we need to talk for another great video. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on the conversation. And until next time, peace.